crap. We just hit a bolt of lightning that was so close. So we're just coming into Tarempa town. This is the capital of the Anambas Islands. I got up this morning, I said to myself, I'm going to manifest to become a millionaire. I reckon it's a piece of cake. And this is how you do it. This way is my home. Go to the Ampas, they said. It will be fun, they said. You'll have to wear your wet weather gear, they said. <laughs> and actually, they didn't say that. It's been a bit of a nightmare, I think, through the night. Holy crap. We just had a bolt of lightning that was so close. It's within half a mile of us. But the wind has swung to the south again now. Uh, it backed off, so I started the engine. Oh, what is it now? Oh, it's 10 to 12 knots coming out of the south again. But oh, mate. This bolt of lightning was huge. It was just over there. I was just winding in the Genoa at the time. That was really scary. That was really scary. So we just had a second big bolt that was again within half a mile of us. It was an absolute crack. Oh. So what I've done, I've pulled out the, um, the VHF cable out of the switchboard disconnected it from the splitter box. Um, apparently if you get a strike, the VHF cable make is a good conduit down to destroy all your electrics. Pulled all the plugs and all of our equipment so nothing's kind of connected to any, physically connected to our laptops and whatnot. Um, now I just gotta sit here and wait. I just hope we don't get hit. Let's see how we go. Well, seeing the dolphins this morning makes up for all the lightning and the unpleasant movements of the boat through the night. We've got 45 miles to go until we get to the outer islands of the Anabas. So it's quite pleasant now. Now the sun's up. It's always more pleasant when the sun's up. And it's always more pleasurable when you're sailing with dolphins swimming off the front of your bow. I love it. May I never tire of seeing the dolphins. You would think that Rob and I went two different weather patterns. <laughs> I've got a woolen jumper and my wet weather top, and he's got nothing. Yeah. It's just pajama bottoms. She's got the hangover of last night because it actually was quite cold. And we've got a couple of little issues now, Rachel. I'm not no baby. Well, Bob does not like that we're going anything over 15 knots of wind. He doesn't like it. We're up to 18 and a half moment. Um, we've been up to 23 as well. So I'm having to hand steer. And the cat was really scared. Once it got over 20 knots, she didn't like being out here. So she's gone inside. But I had the cat on my lap and I was hand steering. And I couldn't adjust the sails, and I'm not great at hand steering all over the place. Good practice, but I do get a bit mesmerised. I've been kind of staring at the compass, and it's making me very sleepy. Uh, we're doing seven to eight knots. We took long, nicely. We are thinking very nicely. We are crossing the South China Sea from Tiamen to the Anambas Islands, a little-known archipelago in Indonesia sandwiched between the East Malaysia Peninsula and the west coast of Borneo. When it comes to natural beauty, the Anambas Islands are a hidden paradise worth exploring and rival Raja Ampat for beauty. Mocha is hiding it well, but she's super excited to be making the Anambas Islands her first overseas destination. Who thought a little stray cat could travel so far? You strike a match, I light the flame I died for you Falling on my weak and willing knees to the ground Hands to my chest, you show me how The rumbling in my heart goes pound for pound So we're just coming into Tarempa 
town. This is the capital of the Anambas Islands where we have to check in and I just love arriving in new places. I don't know what it is. I just like the mystery of it, the newness, comparing it with other places that we've been. This is a lot larger than I thought it was going to be because there are not a lot of people live in the Anambas Islands. There's 255 islands and only 26, I think, of them are inhabited. So I've got an amazingly beautiful looking mosque and all these colourful buildings and colourful boats. Just beautiful. And look at this travelling cat. Introducing Mocha, I was going to say, another name, Mocha, to Indonesia. Indonesia, meet Mocha. Mocha, this is Indonesia. Say hello, Mocha. She, she handled that well, passage pretty well, actually. She did. She didn't vomit, which no. is great. She didn't seem to be so sleepy. So sleepy. Oh no, she well, she sought out, she sought out people to keep company. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Shake hands. Well done, Mocha. Shake hands. Mocha, the sailing cat. Oh, that was all. She yeah. didn't like that. Didn't oh, like that. Doesn't like yeah. that. <laughs> What are your first thoughts, Robert? My first thoughts are it looks um, very forested and there's a few cell phone towers which indicates we can get internet. We need to get our uh, we need to get our clearance done and we need to go to the telecom, get our SIM card and upload the next episode for you. So we're just gonna drop the pick and then back in, tie up onto this wharf here like they do in Europe. How many times have you done this before? Never. I just had a chat with Troy. He said he put it, he dropped the pick in 10 metres and then went back from there. If you look at the bottom, it looks pretty good. Nice clear water. It's tight. Surprisingly clear the water here, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, just saying to technology, we go out to the anchors 60 metres out that way. <laughs> it's at 14 metres up the deck. Is that where the anchor is? Not quite. Uh, quite soon. There's a like either it's like a log or a piece of metal or something that the chains are going over the top of. I mean it shouldn't really be too much of a problem. It should be good I think. Cats and dogs hanging out. <laughs> Ivan calls his feet the dogs. The medium of guitar player who was telling a story about a little boy who couldn't find his way back to the mummy. Okay, I can finish the second half. Okay. Try to fix up the end. Oh, Billy gets home! <laughs> and there's a puss kid. She looks, she looks, she's scared by your storytelling. Yeah, so she's sheltered. I'm, I'm writing a story that is so emotional. It's an emotional roller coaster, really. Chicky I'm calling her Chicky Chicky now. You're Chicky Chicky now. Your name is Chicky Chicky. Arriving in any new country, the first job to complete is clearing customs, which in Indonesia is a smart affair. Following this, Rob and the boys went in search of petrol to top up our jerry cans. Well, this morning I said to myself, I'm going to manifest to become a millionaire. I reckon it's a piece of cake. And this is how you do it. <laughs> you first of all need one of these. And then you slam it into there, and then you wait. Oh no, then you push English. English, yes, I'd like English. And then you do the number one, two, three, four. And then you push in. Let's go for what, two million? Oh, I'll be a two million air. Millionaire. Easy peasy. <laughs> God, I didn't realise it was so easy. Here comes Dickland. So there's no actual petrol bowser anywhere near here. 
we thought there might be one where we could just take the tender up because we assume the boats must be filled up from somewhere that's got a petrol bowser but our advisor told us this is the easiest way for us to do it so basically they fill up all the motorbikes here with the one and a half litre containers and so that's how we're doing it too. I love the ingenuity of these guys. That's the fuel tank. <laughs> That's great. Not much fuel, but it does the job. Okay. So yesterday, yeah, we've had problems with the engine. Uh, fuel getting starved, and it's air getting in the line somewhere. We've placed the connection up in the fuel tank and uh, it didn't help it did help a lot but then it slowly got worse and worse again so I replaced this plunger uh, and that sort of was better for a, a day or so and then that's got worse and worse again but I think I may not have tweaked up the connections very well so last night I tweaked them up again so we're gonna give that a go now and if we have no problems now then it was that continue problems I'm going to change the fuel tank and one step at a time. That is the fourth time the engine has cut out between here and over there. Four times! Big problems. We've had a big morning of shopping. Look at all our shopping. We've even bought a dress to cool down. Saved it on the fifth one. Not good. We'll go again. Here we go. Off we go again. So we're just leaving Tarempa the capital of the Anabas Islands to go and have a look at some of the islands a bit further out. We haven't really picked up the camera much. We've been here, how long have we been here? A week? A week. Quite a bit's gone on because like when we left Tierman, Finn had had that wonderful race and then he went out that evening to celebrate, stayed out all night, that's so unlike him. But you know, he was celebrating and then had to travel all day the next day. Gets back to Italy to training camp, test positive for COVID. He's been in isolation all that time. He couldn't train, uh, well, he was kind of sick in the beginning, but, and the clock is ticking because he's got a race in another four weeks, like elite world champs. And well, just have to see how that goes now. I mean, maybe he won't be able to do it, I don't know. So that was one thing. The cat has gone ballistic, whether that's the crossing or we had some visitors on the boat that were uninvited. Uh, I don't know if they did anything to her. And we also had, well, we changed her food. I bought canned food. She'd been getting little sachets, bought canned food. Turns out there's coloring in the canned foods and don't know if that's affected her. So we've taken her off canned food. She's been having calamari. She's now got the taste for calamari. I tried to give her a sachet, not interested anymore. What a surprise. <laughs> so she's now turned into a food snob, but it has calmed her again. She just spent like three days just, I don't know. She seemed miserable and she made us all miserable because she wouldn't let anybody go near her. She would rush about scarily fast oh, oh, and you're always at, she can just like throw herself at you and you know, she just, wasn't happy she was making this chirping noise rather than purring if you tried to hold her um, and she wouldn't sleep on the bed she's now choosing to sleep on Ivan's bed I think Ivan is her person I love that she's chosen someone I'm happy she has let's hope now that we've taken her up the foods with food coloring in them why they put food coloring in cat's food I do not know but what was the other thing that we've had? Oh, and we've got issues with our 
got some serious issues with uh, the fuel getting to the engine on the dinghy. Not good. So I'm using both Navionics and Zulu at the moment. Zulu's proving more reliable, it's showing all the little coral heads and shallow patches. But using both of them is just a good way to go, I think. So, so Navionics is showing us going over reef right now. Like, bang. Zulu is giving us the all clear. And it is all clear right in front of us, but we've got to stay on it. And Ivan's out there keeping us all clear. So we're using several different approaches, different inputs for our information and decision making. But now we're heading off to Moon Anchorage. Moon something. Looking forward to it. <sighs> she just gave a big deep sigh of breath. It's the happiest this cat, kitten, has ever been. Ever. Yeah. Ever. She's with anybody. She's never been more content. <laughs> with anyone. With anyone. Even her mother. This is the peak, this is the time of her life. This is the best moment in your life, isn't it, kitten? What's your name? Mocha. <laughs> What's your kitty? Kitty. I'm just call her Kitty. Hey, Kitty. Mocachino. I can remember Kitty. Look at that lovely yeah. little pink dot on I call her puppy. We keep, doing, yeah, we keep, keep doing the faux pas Milo. Yeah. I know, she's definitely not Milo. Pas. She's Very not Milo. We've got very different personalities. This kitten has got some character, man. Feisty. She's, <laughs> she's a bit got feisty. some attack cat character. <laughs> oh, there you, oh, you just no. ruin the vibe, you guys. You bring out the camera. Look at her. She's off. No scratch. No scratch. She's oh. having bad time. She's having bad time right now. She was having a much better time a moment ago. Oh, yeah. Look at her. She's miserable. Oh, yeah. That is misery the epitome of oh yeah stop torturing her she's it. very lovely let her be oh all right you come back anytime mocker <laughs> just give her a, give him a little and then come on back 